if you are someone who is into old school television shows, then there is no way that you have not heard of Have Gun Will Travel and you must be a die-hard fan of Paladin. But when you think about it, you can't seem to find the guy who played the Cractor of Paladin anywhere. So in today's video, we are going to talk about what really happened to Paladin from Have Gun Will Travel. We were blessed when a star came to Earth in the form of Boone as Richard Allen Boone on June 18, 1917, in the lands of Los Angeles. Well, it's just common knowledge at this point that the relationship he had with his father was quite unhealthy. As a teenager, Boone had to go up against his father's desire for him to become a lawyer, and it was so bad that the both of them were starting to hate each other. Boone was clear on his goal that he wanted to be someone way more remarkable than just a lawyer. It wasn't because he was bad at studies or simply because he was lazy. No, he was a hardworking man, but he wanted to be someone who could leave a mark in the history of mankind. And he was pretty sure that he won't be able to that, especially if he is a lawyer. His artistic powers established themselves pretty early, but you will be surprised that these artistic powers weren't his popular acting skills, but actually, it was the skill of painting. It wasn't like the guy went against his father and left home, no. He first tried to be a good son and decided to be a lawyer. It wasn't just a decision. He studied for a brief period at Stanford in pre-law studies, but it was a lucky thing for him that made him get out of that school. Well. You can't really call the attack on Pearl Harbor a lucky thing, but events led to events, and Boone found himself doing military service in the U.S. Navy during World War II. Right after the successful bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Boone was finally able to return from the battlefield, and this time he had decided that it was enough of other people making decisions for him, and that now was the time to change his life. He was filled with passion, and this fire led him to focus on pursuing acting as a professional career. Now that we have established his baseline, let's focus on his career now. After deciding to work for Hollywood, Boone soon realized that having the life of an actor was not as easy as it seemed. He realized that he had to work way harder than when he was doing as a student of law. But his passion kept him going and finally, he took a role in Call Me Mister, which ended up becoming his major breakthrough when he played a supporting role in 1951. His performances in his later films like Red Skies of Montana, which was released in 1952, were one of his films where his rugged outline and his vigorous approach towards acting gained attention from audiences all over the world. What seemed to be the golden opportunity in his amazing career was his role in Halls of Montezuma in 1951, which helped him to land way more prominent roles than what he was doing at the time. Boone's acting career was not like other big shots of the industry who once got a leading role and then they decided to never play a supporting role again. Boone was an odd job even by Hollywood standards because his roles are kind of like an amalgamation of supporting roles in major productions and lead roles in smaller films. Some people in the industry called him stupid for that but jokes on them, they have already been forgotten as artists and Boone is still alive and kicking in the memories of his fans. With a strategy like that, he was steadily making a name for himself as a definitive adept actor who will make you a ton of money. His commitment to his profession as well as veracity in depicting characters was not overlooked. And because of all of that, he ended up landing on many more roles, and ultimately, he started his transition to TV. Hang on guys because now you are in for a bit of a history lesson. As you guys already know, throughout the 1950s there was a huge demand for television and all the products of television were on the rise, particularly in the Western Hemisphere. It was during this time that Boone made a grand entrance with Have Gun Will Travel. You must be wondering what solidified Boone's reputation as a television star, so we will tell you just that. It was his artistic depiction of the great paladin. He was a character that was shrouded in the veils of problems and mysteries. You should know that the only reason why Have Gun Will Travel is his most remembered performance that still captivates a multitude of audiences and is also considered one of the best Western series ever made. Even though it has been 50 years, it was all because of his skillful portrayal of Paladin. Richard Boone's television career initially took off with his incredible performance in the groundbreaking series called The Medic. In this series, he portrayed the character of a hospital surgeon and by playing this part he ended up bringing the world of medicine to the screen with a touch of realism and actual medical procedures. The show was known for its unique take on medical drama and it made waves in the industry. It was all because of his legendary performance and we are not just saying this to hype him up, 
but all of our statements are backed by the fact that Boone's performance in the show earned him two Emmy nominations. That's enough of the ancient times. Let's fast forward to the late 50s, because it was this period of time that shaped Boone's career. As we have already told you before, it was in the 50s when Boone stepped into the shoes of Paladin, and the mysterious and philosophical hitman in the Western series Have Gun Will Travel was not just a hit, but it actually became a super icon in the television. It's a no-brainer that if the people of the times of post-Civil War American West found a guy that offered his services for a small fee of $1,000, people are obviously going to go crazy over him. Have Gun Will Travel was a whirlwind of action and character depth that wasn't like another Western series of its time. You should know that a significant portion of its episodes were directed by Gene Roddenberry, and do you know who that is? He is none other than the creator of the original Star Trek. His creation was loved by everyone because Paladin was unlike any typical Old West gunslinger. He had unique sophistication and style with him residing in a fancy San Francisco hotel, always putting on luxury riverboat gambler-style suits with a top hat. You won't be able to find anyone who is so charismatically bold that his business cards claim, Have Gun Will Travel, and this represents his unique brand of honor and professionalism. What set Paladin apart from his killer associates was his intellect, wit, and strong personal code of honor. The man was always armed with pistols, but he was mostly seen relying more on his wits and logic. With his unique skills, he was able to outsmart his enemies in menacing yet stylish black suits and a black Stetson kind of way. One of the catchiest things about the character of Paladin was the mystery that always surrounded him. It was to the point where no one in the entire world ever came to know his real name. That is not the case for only the television version of him. Even in the novels, he went by the name of Clay Alexander, and to this day, fans never cracked the case of his true identity. His name of Paladin itself carries a rich history that originated from the old European term Paladino, which basically means a knight or champion that is devoted to noble causes. It was a fitting title for a character like Paladin, who was a mercenary with a heart for noble deeds and a military past. Paladin and his trusty sidekick went on wild escapades throughout the long 224 episodes of adventure and suspense that made Have Gun Will Travel a timeless classic in television history that captivated its audiences without revealing the true identity of the protagonist. Did you know that there is a rumor that says Richard Boone's character Paladin was a knockoff? Well, it implies that his character might have drawn inspiration from a real-life cowboy legend that was named Victor da Costa. You want to know why the rumor goes around? It's because even Victor da Costa used to go around with the fake name of Paladin in the rodeo circuit, long before the show aired. Another reason is that da Costa used to have his own slick business cards and a wardrobe that was straight out of a Western movie. It was all in black, just like the darkest night of winter. It seems that the rumors did have some sort of strong base because da Costa wasn't pleased and filed a lawsuit against CBS when Have Gun Will Travel was released. He claimed that they copied his style and character without his permission. The courtroom was a full-on drama that lasted for years until they reached a definite agreement. One thing that needs to be focused on is that there was the portrayal of Chinese characters like Hey Boy and the brief appearance of Hey Girl, and if the drama was released today then it might have caused some raised eyebrows. But lucky for them because it wasn't an issue back then. Hey Boy eventually got a real name Kim Chang, and when he got a bit popular then he was even granted a family and a proper storyline. Paladin was also special because he wasn't like a diehard cowboy. He was flexible like water that took on many shapes and forms. One of his notable out-of-the-box moments was when he fully embraced the Chinese culture and showed off his skills in martial arts like Kung Fu. This was very interesting because this kind of scene was way ahead of its time. It broke free from all the stereotypes and showcased a positive representation of diverse cultures. Have Gun Will Travel was kind of like a pioneer in portraying Native Americans in a positive light. It was a huge change from how they are usually represented as savage villains in westerns. The show's popularity was pretty visible, but it got even clearer when its radio spin-off was aired. The best part about this spin-off was that the character of Paladin was portrayed by the dashing John Daner, who was known for his roles in Western TV during the 50s and 60s, and he also appeared in The Twilight Zone. Have Gun Will Travel captivated audiences and critics alike throughout its total of 106 episodes that ran from 1958 to 1960. 
it was such a great sequel that it received three Emmy nominations and earned Gene Rodenberg a Guild of America Award for Best Original Script in 1957. Even the music of the show was like a national anthem, and if you think that we are bluffing, then just take a little time to hear it once. There is a 99% chance that you will get addicted to the melodies of The Ballad of Paladin, which was composed by Bernard Herrmann. Here's another fun fact for you about the show. The opening theme was actually borrowed from a 1951 film that became evergreen with the help of Paladin. Here's a suggestion for you. Wouldn't it be absolutely explosive if there was a hip-hop version of The Ballad of Paladin and the legendary rapper were to star in that version? Well, see the actively burning hype inside you. That was the feeling that everyone felt in 2006 when a rumor started to circulate that Eminem was going to hijack the ballad. As all things have a time to end, so did our paladin. But it wasn't the end to the character that left the fans on the verge of crying, but it was the fact that they practically murdered the character. When the finale of the show aired and the end of Paladin was in sight, that was the time when people stopped looking at the Paladin and saw a guy called Boone. But it seemed that only Paladin ever had any worth and the human name Boone was just a random nobody. Boone was very heartbroken when no one cared enough got tell him about the ending of the show. He didn't hear it from a friend or any manager, but he got to know about it through a bunch of papers. That was such an insulting thing to do. And that was the reason why Boone gave up on the industry, because he might have realized that they only saw him as a money-making machine. Boone's perspective about the industry didn't change much even after three long years. In an interview with the Los Angeles Times, he shared some of his struggles in the TV world, and he shared the challenges that he had to face with balancing creative integrity with commercial pressures. He said that he felt disillusioned with the industry's focus on glitz and glamour, and told the world just how hard it was becoming to do one's best work in television. Richard Boone packed his bags and moved to the tranquil shores of Hawaii accompanied by his third wife, C.L.A. Mallon, and their child because of how fueled he was to live a simpler life away from Hollywood's hustle. This move was a big change in Boone's life because with this action he had completely cut off from the industry. Many believed that it wasn't because of the end of his life as a paladin end that made him leave Hollywood, but it was the cancellation of his compilation series, The Richard Boone Show, that played a role in mending his relationship with the entertainment world and allowed him to focus on what truly mattered to him outside of the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Boone wasn't like a sore loser, and he said what was on his mind, and when the industry bit him, he set the record straight by declaring, I don't want to live in Southern California anymore. The reason that he left the industry wasn't just because he got ditched, Rather, it boiled down to a simple case of not wanting more TV series commitments. Like if he wanted to, he could get back to the industry because it was just a breezy four-hour flight away from LA. One of the other reasons why he left LA was because there was a lack of diversity in Hollywood schools. He always wanted his son to be walking alongside kids from every background. And in Hawaii, that dream came true. Hawaii became where his heart found peace, and in his 1971 interview, Boone said, I got what I was seeking in Hawaii, now it's time to move on. Even after spending so much time in Hawaii, he used to say, I still love Hawaii and I'll always go back there. He said that holding on to his Kona Costa boat on the Big Island is like a treasured keepsake. Boone's love for Hawaii ran so deep that he even stepped into the spotlight for a 1968 movie titled Kona Coast and played a character that was close to his heart. He dreamt of turning it into a series and he wanted to leave a permanent mark on the island's cinematic landscape. That was also like his comeback to the industry when he started to give out back-to-back -back hits that started with Pacific and then in Big Jake in 1971 and The Shootist in 1976. That was the start of a new era for Boone when he came to the industry with a new air when he did absolutely mind-blowing voice acting in an animated TV version of J.R.R. Tolkien's called The Hobbit in 1977. Boone also starred in a series of early 20th century Western TV movies, which included him as Heck Ramsey, who was a part of NBC's weekly mystery movie lineup from 1972 to 1974. The series included some of the alternating adventures with McLeod, Columbo, and Macmillan and Wife. Paladin wasn't just a role that he played, but he was a part of him that no one can ever forget. After the paladin in him ended, he became a better version of himself. He used to say that his thoughts on acting were very different. He viewed it not as a mere profession, but as a way of life. 
and in a chat back in 1963 he said, Talent is not a golden rarity among humans. There is more talent walking the streets of the world than there are pretty girls and bald men. Unfortunately, most talent lives and dies unrecognized. People who become good actors really don't have any other choice. They have to do it. This was the view he had of acting after he said goodbye to Paladin. Boone decided to move to St. Augustine, Florida in 1970. He wasn't in the spotlight this time, but he started doing what he always wanted to do as a child. He took a paintbrush in his hand and started to create art that lit a fire in the hearts of anyone who saw it. He wanted to inspire people just as he inspired them while he was the paladin. Even though he kept the creative fires burning throughout the 70s, he also took on a new role as a mentor who taught new actors how to get around in Hollywood. Now, he was not just the actor who once played the role of paladin, he was now the great Richard Boone who was a professor at Flagler College in St. Boone, delivered a lesson that resonated like a whisper in the wind in his unconventional style. He used to say, don't become an actor. It might seem odd that one of the greatest actors of his time was advising against entering the craft, but Boone wasn't a stupid fool because he had a method behind his madness. It's just too hard to dodge unless you have to. Don't be an actor when I say have to. I don't mean because of money. I mean it's a compulsive necessity. These were the lines he uttered that lit a fire in his students. He added, it's a completely mature existence, grown people going around pretending they're somebody else. They lock people up for that. Boone acknowledged the fine line between playing pretend and being a serious actor, and to do it professionally, one must understand the depth and commitment it requires, a hero or a villain. Richard Boone's ability as an actor went far beyond the confines of the Western genre, and one notable example of one of his villainous performances is seen in Man on a Tightrope, where he played Crofta, who was a character with ties to both the circus and the Communist Party. Boone presented Crofta as a nuanced individual with distinct motivations that added depth and complexity to his character. Boone's talent was way above the gulf of hero and villain, and this was evident in roles like Sam in The Arrangement and Lieutenant Colonel Gilfillan in Halls of Montezuma. In The Arrangement, he portrayed the stubborn father of an executive who was experiencing a mental breakdown and he delivered an impressive performance even though the film had many shortcomings. In Halls of Montezuma, Boone played the character of Lieutenant Colonel Gil Fillin, who was revealed to be a wearied and anxious character in the middle of a Pacific Island assault. When most people think that Boone was only known for his impact with Paladin, then they, it means that they are forgetting the fact that Boone had a successful career that spanned over 30 years, and his multiple awards stood as proof of his ability to perform any character. His journey from the legendary Paladin to the heart-blazing Frank Usher and the poignant Sam is all living proofs of his amazing career. Richard Boone's legacy is far beyond his iconic portrayal of Paladin in Have Gun Will Travel. Boone's career was filled with a bunch of roles that made the world see his acting prowess and depth. But before one dives into these lesser acclaimed yet impactful roles, it's important to acknowledge the nature of Paladin because he was a character that stood out among the one-dimensional heroes that were prominent in 1950s TV westerns. Have Gun Will Travel remains memorable not only because of the character of Paladin, but also because of Richard Boone's beautiful portrayal. Even though Boone gained fame for heroic roles on television, his potential to fly way above Paladin was lost. He had great potential as playing villains on the big screen, but he never got the perfect chance or a script. Boone portrayed Frank Usher in The Tall T, where he was a ruthless outlaw leader who was unafraid of committing cold-blooded murder. Even though the role he got was absolutely demonic, Boone infused Usher with such a vibe and sensitivity that the villainy of the character was even worse than what the directors expected. This ability to bring depth to his characters even if they are heroic or villainous set Boone apart as a legendary actor of the industry who was capable of representing a wide range of roles. Boone's career was spent trying to perfect his craft and that was evident when he gave his honest advice about the challenges of acting and the necessity of hard work and dedication to his juniors. His words contain valuable lessons for aspiring actors even to this day. Just like how the time for Paladin came, so did the time for Boone arrive. Paladin was killed off by the directors and Boone was taken away by fate. Boone was like a true warrior, and when he got throat cancer in the 1980s, he fought for his life till the end, but maybe fate was a fan of him too, because it was bent on taking him away. When he was tired of fighting against cancer, another bombshell dropped on him when he was diagnosed with pneumonia, 
and on January 10, 1981, he said goodbye to the world. He died at the age of 63, and he went away with his gun, which will not travel ever again.